Hello, everyone. I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have embarked on creating a virtual exercise series for our senior residents. We partnered with our Project Independence Fitness instructors to host these virtual classes, which will allow you to stay fit and healthy by participating from the safety of your home. Please enjoy. Oh, this is a gentle yoga, gently transitioning ourselves from sitting in the chair and doing yoga in the chair, which I do, I've done a lot of classes in, and to actually doing it on the floor. So we'll start seated in your chair. So I'm gonna start typical in the chair. And this is what happens when we spend too much time in the chair round and forth. So I'm going to do, I want people to come away from, so that my back is no longer going to be on the chair. I'm sitting closer towards the edge of the chair. So I'm starting to use my back muscles and my body to support myself. Big problem with, is sitting in chairs, we, it contorts our body to the shape of the chair. We want to maintain the alignment of our body the way it was really the way it should be. So we'll start being just sitting comfortably, using my back. The tendency, I know I can't see anybody, but I'm sure a lot of people are already starting to feel uncomfortable in the rounding. We will work our way to sitting on the laying on the floor and then we'll get come up. So I'm gonna go through coming from standing to the chair to the floor and then standing back up again. And that'll be the option of sitting on the chair or finishing sitting on the mat. So first is first we start with the first thing first, and that's our breath. Yoga is about the breathing. But you want to first observe your breath. You want to get to understand how, what, where your breath is traveling, what parts of your torso move as you breathe. Particularly, we want to focus mostly on our exhale. That's the most important part of the breath. Of course, we can't have the exhale out the inhale. So I breathe in slowly, filling my lungs, and exhaling. Again, trying to remove as much air as I can comfortably through the, through the exhale. Let your eyes gently close. Starting to become an awareness for where you're body is in space, this, this alignment. Try to think of, you know, if you, and if you can, you know, eventually start to check your body in the mirror and you may find it's quite a bit different than what we envision ourselves as. Mirrors will tell a lot. We're going to start though, let's bring our awareness deeper inside to create a vibration in our body by chanting the sound ohms, bringing your hands Inhale for Om. Next 
So I'm gonna bring my hands back down to the left, my eyes open. This is gonna come in through a couple of sun salutations, or really half sun salutations, seated in the chair. Take my arms down at the side. My inhale, I'm taking my arms around and up. The exhale, I'm gonna fold over. It's like a swan dive. I wanna to try to bring my ribs down on top of my legs, which is actually, I'm gonna get into the next time. It's not that easy. The inhale, I'm gonna take my arms around and up. If I am folding in what's called the hip crease, if you bring your thumbs all the way up onto your, high is up onto your thigh, just as you come into the hip, that's where you wanna fold from. And it's a place that you're gonna find a lot of tightness in here. And that, a lot of that comes from sitting in the chair. So we'll do that one more time. I'll do it one more time in the seat in the chair, but we'll do it a couple more times after that. The inhale, I come up and exhale. I'm trying to bring one rib at a time down on top of my thighs. Not an easy place. And then we're gonna add on a little bit to this. I'm going to lift just my shoulders, a half forward fold. You can even hold the back of the chair if you want. Exhale, folding back down. I press into the ground. I take my arms back up and exhale the arms down. So you will have the option of doing the next one from a standing position, or you can continue to do this seated. So the tendency, I'm sure a lot of people are working their way up. Try to use your legs. I get my shoulders forward. I come up to stand. The inhale, I'm taking my arms up. Exhale, I'm folding forward like a swan dive. Again, I'm folding from my hips, bringing one rib down. I bring my hands onto the legs and I lower my hands, maybe onto the knees, maybe to the feet, maybe to the floor. And then I come up halfway, lengthening the spine and exhale, lowering down. Inhale, I come back up. Same thing as we did in the chair, you can do standing. But, the, but standing, we're gonna be able to do a, a few more things. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And I come all the way back up and exhale, going down. Okay, we're gonna come to um, the next pose, which is to, to lower all the way to the ground. You can fall forward and just on the chair and bring your ribs on top of your thighs. My legs are firm, I'm gonna take the arms up. This time I'm gonna round. As I round and I try to bring them down, I'm not going to be able to come much below my knees as I round in my spine. I lengthen my spine and then I can lower down further, reaching for the floor. I'm going to come up halfway and I'm going to step into the plank pose or a modified plank pose. So if you may need to bend your knees to get your hands flat and stepping or walking your feet back and lowering your knees down onto the floor into a table pose. If we're gonna come into a table pose here, you can do this, this movement, it's called the cat and cow, just by, in the chair, just by bringing your hands on front of your knees and arching the spine. And exhale, I'm just gonna round my spine a little bit. It doesn't round a lot, but I'm just moving, bending my spine forward and back. So we've added a much more challenging place than we did in a chair or even standing. This, this um, table posture. And I'm gonna add some really good stuff to really strengthen the back body. I'm gonna we're gonna take my right leg back. I reach my right heel back, and I'm gonna take my opposite arm up. 
Well, first of all, just do it with just the leg first. We'll add that the second time around, as it's not as easy as it looks. I'm straightening the leg, I'm lifting my chest, and I'm gonna lower the right leg down, I'm gonna take the left leg up. And then we're gonna use arm and leg, more challenging. So people that find this too much difficulty can, can do this, Stand, can just do this one, just the legs. Or if you're sitting in the chair, you can just take one leg out at a time. I'm lowering down. Second, again, a, a little bit more challenging. I'm gonna take my right leg up again. This time, my left arm comes up. You may be rocky at first. You may be touching down. Eventually, you start lifting the arm and leg higher. And then lower down. It's a slow progression. One, one move at a time. You can just stay with the sun salutation seated in the chair too. I mean, as long as we're doing something, doing some activity every day, and this time I'm taking my left leg up, right on. So there's different ways of sitting and coming onto the ground and coming back up. So I'm gonna come back up the way I Pretty much the way I went down, I'm going to curl my toes and I'm going to lift my hips and walk my feet forward. My hands up the leg, I straighten my back, I take the arms up. Just a very simple uh, version of the sun salutation. And we're going to get a little bit more difficult with that, but for now we're just going to come to, I'm going to come to stand, we're going to go through the standing pose. So, most of the people that are seated can come up and do this standing. If not, I've had, if you can check back, I've had classes doing this, stand these poses, sitting in a chair. As long as we keep moving and doing something. So again, I'm in my alignment. My ears, shoulders, hips are in alignment. The next thing to, look, to notice is to, which leg do you stand on? Right, I'm standing on both legs, right? But actually, you know, I'm standing more on one leg as I exaggerate. I want to try to find so the weight is even in both legs. So I'm just going to shift side to side a little bit. So that I, till I find the place in the middle, both legs evenly weighted. As we're going to move into balance, a little bit, a little bit at a time, I'm going to take a wide step out with each leg. A wide leg a position now slightly different. I'm going to bring my hands to the hips, preparing for the warrior two. So I'm going to turn to the side, to the, my right. I start with my left foot. I turn my left foot just a little in my left, my, my heel reaches back. I turn my right leg out 90 degrees. I want to make sure my hips had shifted a little bit. I'm going to bring my hips so that they're right underneath me. I'm gonna bend my front knee till my knee is over the ankle. I take my arms out to the side, shoulder height. Holding this for five breaths. And then I'm gonna switch, I'll go to the other side. This is simply a straightening the front leg. Um, for this time, I'm going to come to center. As some people, you know, you, you may start to feel your arms getting heavier. Some people feel like, oh, that's not enough. You can keep your arms lifted the whole time and you get a real workout for your arms. This time I'm turning to the other side. My right foot turns just slightly. My left leg bends 90 degrees. So my knee is over the ankle and my arms come back up. Holding this pose, five breaths. Again, I'm gonna come back to center. You're welcome to keep the arms lift out to the side like this. You start to build more strength into the shoulders. Some people may get tired. You can bring your hands back to the hips. And we're going to turn back to the right again, coming into 
through warrior two, remember warrior two, this time a little variation, I'm gonna hinge at my hip. I'm gonna bring my right arm on top of the right leg, left arm comes alongside my ear. I come back up on the inhale, straighten the leg, I'm back to center, keeping my arms lifted or onto the hips. And then I'm gonna to turn to the other side. Again, I turn the back foot in first, the front leg out, coming into the warrior two. I inhale, I exhale, I'm in the side angle pose. Coming back up, come to center, bring my hands back to the hips. Triangle pose. There's actually two triangle poses, but we'll we'll get into the we'll start to get into the second one, which is much more difficult. But for now, we'll start with the first one. Again, I turn my back foot in, my front leg out 90 degrees. My legs are firm and straight. I'm not, I want to shift, I want to fall from the hips, so I'm going to shift my hips back. I increase the depth of my hip crease doing that. You can even put your finger. You want to find that soft place between the leg and the hip. That's where you want to fold. A lot of people fold like this. See how much further I come when I shift, when I fall from the hips. One more time, but this time my arms are lifted. And then I bring my hand down onto the leg. The other arm comes over my shoulder. You can't see it from that angle probably, but my, my hand, my top hand is over my shoulder, which is over the bottom shoulder, which is over the hips, which are over my feet. Yeah, we want to be in this straight line when you do that. Because the tendency is the, for the shoulders to come forward of the hips. So I'm going to be there like this, not as healthy for our back to come, particularly to come out of it, which I am now coming up. And I'm going to switch right to the second side. Again, I'm deepening my hip crease. And I reach out. As I bring my hand down onto the shin, I stack my self, my arms, my shoulders are over the hips, which are over my feet. Just trying to come into this posture and breathe as comfortably as you can. I'm coming back up. I'm going to come to center. I'm gonna bring my feet closer together. Just heel toe my feet in. So we're gonna come into the tree pose, which is gonna help stabilize the balance. As I'm gonna, as we're gonna to move towards the revolve triangle, which is a much more of a challenge to the balance. So this will help stabilize itself. Again, you wanna find your alignment ears, shoulders, hips, over the ankles, pressing into the ground. You're, you want to like grow like a tree so your feet reach into the earth, stabilizing you. And again, you want to this time, you want to stand on one leg, but you want to find the center. You want to be in a straight line. So both legs are evenly working. Shift the weight into the left leg, taking the right leg up, out to the side so the foot can come into the calf the toes can be on the ground the foot can even come up into the thigh above the knee just not in our knees we don't want to push it into the knees we want to squeeze our legs towards each other towards the middle of the body the hands come to the middle it's like a figure skaters we want to bring everything into the center when they're, twir when they're twirling. Now I'm going to take my arms up. I'm 
which is a little more challenging. Coming out the way I, I was, I came in, I come into center, bring my leg up and back to center. Lower the foot down, lower the hands down. Just shifting to the other side. Taking the leg up, out to the side. I'll do it, I keep my toes on the ground like a kickstand, just like I did on the other side. You're welcome to do it as, make this as challenging as you want. You need the balance and to be able to come onto the floor. Let's take the arms up. Seems like a long, long way to go, but we're getting the stable, stability and balance. We, we're working on the strength, the mobility, all of this is needed to be able to use the, to come onto the floor and use the mat. Coming out the way I came in, you're welcome to stay a little bit longer. Your if it gets difficult, come here. The center, a little easier. This, you got to think of this as a progressive practice. You do this and you practice this every day or four or five days a week, particularly this tree pose, you'll find a lot more balance in, your, in what you're doing. The next pose is going to take a little bit more balance. It takes, actually takes a lot of balance, but again, progressively going into this. I'm going to use the chair. You can use the back of the chair, the seat of the chair. I'm going to bring it to the floor so I need. It should be here in the middle. I don't want to put the chair on my mat. I'm standing very close to the to the chair. It's called, well, this is working towards the twisting triangle. I'm going to take a step back with my left leg. I step a little bit forward with my right. My hips are squared. My see my my hip didn't follow my left hip didn't follow my left leg. It's turned forward towards the front of the facing evenly to the chair. My legs are straight. My right, particularly my right leg, I'm going to take my left arm up and I'm going to turn and twist. I'm going to turn my back towards it. You're going to see more and more of my back. You could even take your right hand, turning your right to the right. My left ribs turn to the right, and I bring my hand down onto the chair. You could be on the out all the way into it, on the left side of the chair, even all the way to the right side of the chair. A little more challenging here. And again, I'm still turning my ribs. So I'm stacking my right shoulder over my left shoulder, over my hips, over my ankles, and the arm can come up. Start easy, something that's not too challenging. This is too challenging to bring your hand to the other side of the chair, and you'll see it becomes a lot easier. I lower down. I'm facing the ground, and I'm going to step my back foot forward, and I'm going to come all the way up to stand. Back taking a deep exhale, I'm going to go right into the other side. I'm taking my right foot back. It's not a big step back, because if you step too far back, the hip is going to want to follow. I want my hip square, so I'm drawing my left hip forward, my right hip my left hip back, my right hip forward, my right arm comes up, and I start turning to the left. I can take my left hand, taking my right ribs and turning a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring my right hand down either to the right side of the chair, the middle. With practice, you may be able to get your hand on the left side of the chair eventually the hand can start to come onto the leg. Maybe for next time. Again, I'm turning my ribs more and more to the left, 
twisting triangle. And then the arm comes up. You'll see this is a challenge to the brow balance. It's also a little bit harder to breathe while doing this. So I'm going to talk a little less. Coming out, I bring my hands down, I'm facing the chair, and I'm going to step forward, come up. Okay. I'm going to take the chair out of the, uh, actually I'm going to, actually I'm going to want to do, we're going to go into a very important pose, the squat pose. So I'm going to turn around, using the chair as just as a visual image. I don't really want to actually touch the chair. My feet are going to be about hip width apart. It's like I'm going to want to sit down, but it's like, oh, somebody calls me as soon as I start to sit down. Oh, I have to come back up. I'm going to do that a few times. If you see my knees are staying over my ankle, it's my hips that are coming back over the chair. My arms come up because as I bring my hips back, the weight is going to want to start falling back. So if I don't use my arms, I start to, oh, I fall down. And it's okay, I'm just going to come back up. Because if you, you want to feel all the weight falling into your heel, I'm going to go really slow. This time I'm going to take my arms forward to help counterbalance that. Taking my arms up and coming back. So that's the main motions of this pose is the hips coming back, knees over ankles. That's the first thing to work on to get this movement down. Something that we have to do every day, sit down, stand up. And we repeat that many times a day. So this is a very good functional exercise. The next thing, if you're doing this a lot, you're gonna find, I see a lot of people that they come here. See how my ribs come down on top of my thighs. No, I wanna keep my chest lifted. I inhale, sitting down and coming up. One more, this time holding for I say five comfortable breaths. I'm going to sit my hips down and take my arms up. Try to look up towards your hands. And breathe as comfortably as you can as I slowly lower my hips down. And coming up, I'm coming up. You're Welcome to hold for a little bit longer. Okay, so you can start to decide now, in the next minute or so, what do you want to do? Do you want to sit on the mat or sit on the chair? I would not recommend using the chair to come to the ground. Either sit down on a chair or decide maybe it's time to try this without the chair. Different ways to sit down onto the chair, onto the floor. I'm going to bring my, but I have to bring my hands down. So I'm bending my knees. I'm bringing my hands down. I'm going to take my left leg under the right and start to work my way towards the floor. And I'm going to straighten my legs out. To this. this is a difficult place, a difficult posture, I should call it. As again, we want to start to round. You want to have the posture. My, my starting with the legs. The legs press down. You know, my toes draw back. My legs are very active. My hands um, are a little behind my hips because I want to press my lower back in and lift my chest up. The chin may start to lift up. You want to keep your chin level to the ground. Yeah, this is not an easy posture to hold. You can even make this even really active by 
lifting your heels up. As we're going to work on the actual sitting, the seated posture. So I'm going to start with taking my right foot into my inner left thigh. Well, let me start with the other side so you can see. Yeah. The foot can come all the way up into the top of the leg. You can, just like with tree pose, it can be just into the upper, just above the knee. But I'm going to turn so I want to face the front leg and I'm just going to lengthen my back. Now, I'm immediately going to want to start to round as I bring my torso down on top of the front leg. But you want to keep, I want you to keep the back flat for this, this, for this today, what we're doing. Straightening the back as I walk my hands out. Maybe the hands come to the foot, maybe it just reaches the knee. But if you keep the back flat, you're going to get so much more out of what we're trying to do, which is lower my torso down to the leg, reaching closer to the floor. It takes a lot of strength and flexibility to be able to comfortably sit and stand. Taking your time. It doesn't matter if you're here or you're here. As long as you're lengthening the back, I'm gonna come all the way up and do the same thing on the other side. Taking my other leg again, yeah, into the inner thighs. The higher your heel comes up, the more challenging it's gonna be. I'm gonna turning my torso, just so I face my front leg and I'm gonna walk my hands out again. Again, I'm, see, I'm starting to round. So as soon as you start to become aware of the spine rounding, straighten. As we spend so much time sitting in chairs and cars and everywhere we go, we're sitting. The spine will naturally start to round more, making it more difficult to sit on the floor. And I'm going to come back up. Both legs out again. Just to give yourself time. This takes a long time to be able to move from a chair to the floor. And there's more poses that we can do. You can do the, these somewhat sitting in a chair, but it gets a little bit more powerful as we sit on the floor. So I'm going to take my left foot in. You can take your right out of I'm taking the left so you can see it a little better. But I will do, I'll turn because I, the tendency is, and I used to do this too, is bring my foot like this. Make the foot of, feet about hip width apart. My lower back is pressing in, and I'm getting a big stretch into the back of the leg, of uh, the upper leg. That's the muscle that we use when we do the squats. Then I'm gonna switch sides, I'm gonna straighten both legs out and take the other leg in. We're gonna do this a couple of times and again, we're gonna add a twist to this next time. Starting off with the basic, and you slowly make things harder and harder. As these two poses that we're doing become extremely challenging. You don't have to be. You can be just sitting here comfortably. And it should be. You need to be able to be comfortable in whichever variation you're going to do. So I'm going to take my right leg back in again, but my left arm comes around the leg. And I'm turning, I'm trying to bring my left ribs onto my right thigh. And then at the end, I just turn my head and look back, rotating the spine. Breathing comfortably. Again, I'm twisting, so it makes it a little harder to breathe. So 
which can be a good thing, really, as a as a proverb, because most of our breathing comes from the muscle called the diaphragm. As I turn and I twist, I compress the diaphragm. But thankfully, we have more muscles that assist the diaphragm in breathing. I'm taking the other leg, and then as I start to use the other muscles, my breathing becomes stronger. I'm strengthening the other muscles. I'm turning to the other side this time. There's, the other, there's plenty of muscles that assist, the assisting of our respiratory system. The stronger those muscles become, the stronger we, our breath is, the more of our lungs that we learn to use, to breathe into. Coming back to center. Okay. Back to our standing seating pose. I'm going to turn back to the side. This time, I'm going to bring, bend my knees, I'm going to bring the bottoms of my feet together. Stretching my inner thighs. We kind of did it one side at a time. Now I'm going to do both at the same time. So I have my feet pretty far away from my hips. To make this more challenging, you can bring them closer together, which I will do a little bit. As you see that though, as I bring my myself closer in, my knees start to lift up. I want to try to keep the knees down as much as I can. So this is a slow progression. If you feel like it's your knees are all the way up, you're up here like this, you're better off being here. With practice, you start to feel more freedom in the hips. You can bring your legs in close. As well, working towards soon the more difficult part as we start now, we're going to work on the, the defying the grab. First, we're going to come into a comfortable seated post. I've taken my right foot under my left knee, my left under my right. They call this the easy seated posture. As you may start to see, this is not easy. If you can come onto the floor, you can spend like have have like a stopwatch and see how long you spend on one side then the other and then switch try to do it the, do it on the other side and you may find wow that that's a lot more difficult so you want to put the time or maybe do a little bit longer where you're finding it more difficult and as i'm going to start to show up how to come up from the ground first i'm going to come up the way I sat down, I'm gonna bring my right foot to the floor, my left leg comes under my right, my hands come to the floor. I'm gonna use the floor, don't use a, a chair or a table or something that you're gonna pull, pull down on top of you. Coming up to stand. And then I'm gonna come back down again and show another way, which I generally do, I go through what's called the downward dog. It's all practice. What you feel com more comfortable with is what you stay with. So I'm in my table pose that we were in before. I lift my hips up so my knees come off the ground. I bring my hips back. I walk my hands back, my feet forward, come to stand. Okay. So we're gonna to come to our resting pose in a little while. But now I'm gonna sit in the chair and I'm gonna do a, a few more things in the chair. And then you have the option of whether you wanna finish lying on the floor or lying in the chair. I'll show a couple of things not to do, 
lying in the chair, which is one of the reasons why I like to use the floor. But I'm gonna, again, I'm sitting at the edge of my chair. I'm gonna lie back and take my right leg into the chest, stretching the left leg out. Now, some people may wanna stay on the floor and do this laying down. Because you're in a laying down, you're gonna see you're in a straight line. I'm kind of like a hot dog shape. I'm kind of like bending forward a little bit because that's the position of the chair and my body, which don't always work as well. I'm gonna switch sides, taking my left leg in. Being, being able to sit on the floor, even a little bit of every day you'll find is, is a lot more work, and, but there is the benefits from it. You can do this much better, these poses sitting on, a, on the floor. If, you're, if you are on the floor, you're gonna to wanna to bring your knees into your chest. So being in the chair, I'm gonna, I don't wanna bring both legs up into my chest. I'm less stable, you could, I, I, you could slop, roll out of the chair, but instead I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my chest down on top of my thighs. All these exercises, you may find it easier to fold here. It's, it's a great stretch for the lower back, the shoulders, the upper back, come up as I'm going to work as I'm going to come to the, the the resting pose but I'm going to take my if you can't if you didn't get a great stretch on the floor you can do this seated this is a we had remember we had our leg like this this time if you're on the chair you can come here do the same stretch here if you didn't get a if you didn't feel like you got a great stretch on the floor. And we're gonna put two poses together from here. A pose that will really help sitting on a chair, on the floor, is called the figure four. I come here, I stretch the hip. So if you're not quite ready yet to really spend, is to start practice sitting on the floor, as you may have seen, it's, it's going to take time to be able to sit on the floor for any length of time. As you remember how the knees come up off the ground, this will help, but, but it takes time. This is a practice of, and of patience or practice in patience. Let's switch. I'm going to take my other leg up and come into the twist. center, again back into the figure four. It's so important just to have patience with ourselves. Sometimes we, we just get into be too much of a rush to try to do something. The floor will be there for a while. You may need to practice these two poses a bit to be able to comfortably sit on the floor. And I'm going to show the resting pose. A lot of people I lie back into the chair and do their resting pose like this. A big mistake that I see, I'm going to turn to the side, is a lot of people want to, like, think they want to be more closer to lying on the floor and lay their head back. This is not good for the neck. This is not good either, but it's better than letting the head fall back. And we're just going to take our five minute rest here. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.